Hi Libra, Rosemary from Rosemary Astrology. Well, I was just saying this to Virgo, but even more so in your case, all your planets are in the Western hemisphere of your chart. So do know the general, general energy at this time. You have a lot of focus on others. You're doing, um, you're very focused on others and, you know, putting in time in the caring for others. And don't forget about yourself though, Libra. That's, it's very important. We can't help others if, you know, we're not um, in a right frame of mind or we're not in, uh, we're feeling tired and we're not in tip-top shape. Anyway, having said that, um, Saturn is in your fifth house and will be leaving in March. Now, the fifth house has everything to do with creativity, children, it's gambling and speculation, it's pleasure pursuits, it's also romance. So Saturn is a very heavy energy. Saturn sets up limits and boundaries, makes us work really hard for what we want. Saturn um, governs time, uh, represents someone older, so Saturn has been saying to you the last three years, you know, get clear on what you, you want, do the work, take responsibility, um, define who you are or define whatever, you know, that creative pursuit looks like to you or what that romance looks like to you. There's nothing, you know, it's also pleasure pursuits. Saturn doesn't really do, you know, goofing off and having fun. So, you know, even if you um, have a creative pursuit or, you know, you are doing something for pleasure, there's probably a learning component to it as well. You know, it's not, it's not going to be something really just for fun. It's going to be something that's fun, but you're also learning something at the same time. Um, you know, if you strike up a romance during that time, it can be with someone older than you. You know, someone has more of a, a guiding effect. That's, you know, another example. In terms, you know, of children, it can have had a lot of influence on how big your role is with your children, you know, depending. And of course, children are always growing and changing. It can also be someone else's children. It can be stepchildren, nieces and nephews. It can be grandchildren. Um, you know, this also covers adoption. It covers, you know, fertility treatments. It covers pregnancy. So, you know, maybe, you know, who is responsible for what or who is taking on more responsibility and less responsibility? What is your, your role as a parent or as that person in, you know, that child or those children's lives? So do know whatever has felt heavy or stuck, you know, maybe you've been trying to get ahead with a creative pursuit of some sort. Um, you know, if you are speculating, by the way, Saturn doesn't really do gambling and speculation. <laughs> So it is not advised, you know, during that time and you probably haven't felt, you know, either haven't been successful or things haven't worked out because Saturn does set up limits and, and barriers pretty quickly. But um, Saturn, two things, Saturn will be leaving in March and going into Pisces. He is very strong in Aquarius. He's the traditional ruler of Aquarius. So you've probably felt that quite intensely. Do know that energy will shift. Also, Saturn usually rewards us when he leaves a sign and moves into another. And do know, you know, you've probably gotten quite clear on what you want to do. If it's, you know, a creative pursuit, perhaps you've refined or honed exactly, you know, what it is you do within that realm. You know, if it's writing, what type of genre you write, or if it's music, what type of music do you play? There's a, a very strong learning component with Saturn. So we learn how to do a lot of things with within whatever um, we're doing because he makes us work so hard. We have no choice but to, you know, figure it out and really become, I say we're almost specialists by the time Saturn is done with us. Now, Venus will move in there on the 2nd of January and be conjunct Saturn from the 21st to the 25th. So Venus is love, creativity, um, you know, beauty, romance, also related to money. So the planet of romance and love in the house of romance, that is very much a likelihood of a romance starting up. And when she is conjunct Saturn, it could be with someone older or someone who has um, a, a guiding or counseling role. Or in the reverse, you could be the older party. Or it, you know, it can just be the, because Venus wants to enter into relation with others, not necessarily always romantically, but that is a strong component. Um, this could be just someone who will probably be older and will help you and guide you in one of your uh, pursuits or in something you're trying to do. Now, Venus moves quite quickly. So by the 26th, we'll move into Pisces. But just before that, and I'm going to go back and forth a bit here, but just before that on the 21st, because we're talking about Venus, so I'm going to focus a little bit on the end of the month and then go back. The sun will have moved. Does all that fit? Yes. The sun will have moved into your fifth house as well. So this you know, 21st to 25th 
but because Venus leaves on the 26th, this is a really wonderful time. The sun is going to bring even more light and energy to that area. So, you know, do look for, you know, Venus is going to smooth over Saturn's last months in, in your fifth house. You know, do look for how for um you know someone who as i said is going to help you maybe a romance that is going to begin you know something in that area before venus takes off on the 26th and remember mars is in his last stay there but moving this back i'm just going to continue with venus on the 26th she will move into your sixth house where neptune has been for a long time now neptune is you know the opposite almost of saturn he blurs boundaries you know neptune brings a dissolution of the ego it blurs our individuality it wants us to be very compassionate you know it wants everybody to meld into one in some big you know compassionate um no limits no boundaries between self and other no differences type of soup if i can use that word and you know that's wonderful obviously you know we should we should you know we almost have i think a moral obligation to help out you know help each other out but Neptune, and I've done a video on Neptune through all 12 signs and 12 houses, there's an ideal of compassion there that can make us so selfless that we forget ourselves. And you could say, you know, that that's wonderful. We have had, you know, people throughout history that have been completely selfless and, you know, completely sacrificed themselves for others. But, it, you know, it's, I don't, I don't want to say, you know, if that is your personal choice, there's absolute free will in astrology, <laughs> getting into a moral dilemma here, but, um, you know, do lo no Libra, there's an unrealistic and, um, dreamlike aspect of Neptune. So it can lead us down a path where we are so selfless that, you know, we're self-sacrificing in terms of our time, our energy, um, you know, even our money. Now, having said all that, Neptune has been there in your sixth house of work, whether that's paid employment. So your job, your workplace, your coworkers, or it is roles and goals you have in terms of unpaid employment, maybe duties you have, responsibilities to others. You know, the sixth house is the, the house of service. So that can very much be, you know, a job you do or a duty you have in relation to someone else that isn't paid employment. You know what? One of the examples that comes to mind is, you know, maybe a, an elderly parent or an elderly relative that you take out every week to go on their errands or to go to appointments. You know, that's, that's just one example. So... Um, Neptune has been blurring that, you know, maybe in terms of work, you felt that, you know, maybe there are, you know, people working against you or that you're not getting ahead or doing what you want or not getting the promotions you want. That's, you know, one effect or maybe again, blurring of boundaries in terms of, you know, jobs and duties. Maybe you're being called to do too much, you know, it's taking up too much of your time or too much of your energy. When Venus, Venus will not be conjunct Neptune until next month, but you know, Venus again is a planet that wants to enter into relation with others. There can be a positive aspect with that. You know, perhaps someone will help you. You know, you can easily find someone that, that will cooperate with you. On the other hand, because, you know, Neptune, if Neptune is at home in Pisces and he is very strong there, Venus is exalted in Pisces. So she is like, you know, the honored guest, she is put on a pedestal and she can be her very Venusian self. Related to romance, this could be a workplace romance beginning. You know, this could be, um, you know, creative downloads in terms of work. If you have a creative pursuit, if you work in something that is uh, creative, to, creative related, but also, you know, Venus's desire to enter into relationship with others can also make her self-sacrificing. And Venus will modify and, you know, take on the attributes of the sign she is in or the planet she is next to in order to facilitate that cooperation, right? You have, you have to be diplomatic and there has to be a give and take, all the opposite of Mars that doesn't care what everybody else is doing or thinking. So, you know, just again, guard against that being you know, overly compassionate. I remember this is the house of service. So we don't want to become so much in service of others. And as I said, that's your general energy that we're forgetting ourselves. You know, there's a, a necessi necessity of having a little reality check once in a while with things that are going on, you know, with Neptune and Pisces, and especially when Venus joins up. Having said all that, going back to the start of the month, Pluto has been in your fourth house in Capricorn for about 18 years. And the other big thing is that by this time next year, Pluto will have shifted into your fifth house. 
Pluto is very deep transformative energy. It is, you know, death and rebirth, you know, things like completely clearing the slate and starting over. And the fourth house is related to home and family. It's related to even homeland. So, you know, your state, your province, your country, your region. It is physically your home. So your flat, the house you live in. And as I said, it is family. So family of origin and family of choice. With Pluto there, you've probably seen deep transformation. And it is in two ways. Pluto especially operates on transforming us deeply and profoundly. So whatever changes you have seen in fourth house matters have the ultimate goal is to transform you and help you grow and evolve. You have perhaps had, you know, power struggles within a family dynamic. You know, in terms of, you know, as I said, family of origin, family of choice. So your parents, you know, your blood family um, or, you know, your family, including, you know, you know, spouse, children or whatever your family looks like, you know, what, the people you, you choose to call family. It can be, um, you know, changes, complete changes in that respect. Maybe you've moved somewhere completely new. Maybe you have done, you know, extensive uh, remodeling or redesigning or, um, you know, something that has, you know, deeply affected you. So maybe the change has, you know, it, it will probably be or usually is with Pluto, you know, deep and profound change to us. So maybe that change has, you know, affected you on a particular way. Maybe you've moved somewhere else or into something much smaller. Um, you know, maybe you've decided that your house is, you know, too big, too much responsibility, uh, too much work, maybe too costly. And you've, you know, you've opted for something much smaller. You've some moved from the country to the city. So regardless of what that change is on the outside, it affects who we are, right? We've gone from being, um, you know, someone living in the country or, you know, a small town resident to, you know, a city dweller. And that's just one example, you know, or perhaps it is moving out of your home, you know, your, your original home. So you're no longer the child living at home. You're now more the growing up with your own place. And, you know, I could go on and on and I don't want to do that. I'm going to take up so much time, but just know that Pluto is wrapping up his stay in your fourth house. The sun is there bringing focus to that, um, Mercury is also there, although retrograde at the moment. So, you know, these planets, outer planets that spend a long time in a sign work in cycles. So the sun is bringing another cycle, you know, bringing uh, energy, vitality and focus to that area. Mercury there is also bringing your thoughts and ideas to that area. You know, you're exploring maybe different options. With the retrograde, there are messages coming up from the past. So you can look back to mid-December when Mercury entered into shadow period and do know he will go direct on the 18th of January but still be in shadow until the 7th of February so maybe you know it is in with that short time frame that a message from the past or you are reviewing something that is going to contain a message in relation to the fourth house but also I'm getting the feeling looking way back because this is as I said Pluto's final stay in your fourth house before he moves off. By the time the sun goes all the way around and comes back next year in 2024, Pluto will be on his way out. So there's a final review here going on. Just briefly, also, Jupiter is in your seventh house, having gone direct the end of December and will be there until May. Jupiter is very beneficial. So any partnership, business partnership, marriage partnership will benefit from Jupiter's energy at this time. If you're in a committed partnership, it will grow because Jupiter brings expansion. It will deepen. Can this mean marriage? It can. You can definitely be taking your relationship to the next level. It also depends on your personal placements as well, but that can be an indication. If it's a business partnership, you know, it can definitely become more committed in terms you're going to be working one-on-one -on -one with this person or this, you, the two of you are really going to go into partnership you know, together and you're really going to focus on that. If you're looking for, you know, solutions or opportunities within a committed partnership, Jupiter definitely delivers and we don't have to look too hard to find them either. Also know, you know, this is the house of enemies, of rivals, of the competition. 
so if you know maybe you're going to find a solution also in that aspect if someone has been you know uh, your competition in you know the workplace or somewhere else or you know a rival you know you might find jupiter wants us to grow also we also say expansion in terms of more and bigger but jupiter wants us to grow you know it wants us to expand our horizons as well so maybe your outlook is going to change or you're going to find a solution in terms of someone who has been you know you felt you've been in competition with or has been competing with you and also Mars going direct on the 12th will slowly, slowly pick up speed. This is the ninth house and this is related to all that is legal, medicine, publishing. You know, if you have any legal matters or you are looking to publish and as I said, we think of a book, but do remember that could be something like publishing a paper, publishing a thesis, publishing something online. Uh, as Mars picks up speed, he's going to be going slowly in January, just, you know, mid-January coming out of retrograde. But whatever has felt stuck in those topics will begin to move forward again. The ninth house, you know, is also related to uh, Jupiter. So if I sound like I'm repeating myself, it's not your imagination. Um, things like philosophy also, higher learning, long distance travel, travel in the mind. It's what is foreign to us and we come into contact with, we learn about in order again to expand our horizons, expand our mind, you know, very Jupiter topics because of his relation to the ninth house. So you will be able to go ahead with that. Mars brings a lot of focus. So you're going to be, you know, very focused, very driven and have a lot of energy to accomplish that because by mid -Mar by the end of March, I think the 25th, Mars will have left and moved into your 10th house of success. And there is a full moon there in your 10th house of success. Don't get triggered by the full moon. I always say that's an increase of emotion. And at home in her sign of cancer, the moon can be her super duper, you know, over emotional, over reactive self. A planet in at home, at home in a sign is very strong, but it can also, you know, over express itself or, you know, um, over be itself. So the moon might tend to be even over emotional on this full moon, you know, and express its whole um, emotional palette. I would say, you know, being the drama diva. So it can be a wonderful nurturing energy because of cancer. Uh, cancer is very much know our emotions and our primal need for nurturing and security. Just guard against becoming over emotional and having too many of your own, you know, emotional demands. But I see this as a very soft, very pleasant full moon. And whatever does come up during the full moon, because the full moon does uh, highlight things or sometimes bring them to culmination, just wait until afterwards, you know, so, you know, the ninth, 10th, when the energy dies down and you can approach it more rationally. So Libra, that is everything I wanted to tell you. Have a wonderful month of January. Don't forget to like if you liked, subscribe and share this with someone else you think might find it interesting and leave a comment. I read all your comments and thank you so much for your likes and subscribes. I absolutely love bringing the astrology to you every month and I will see you in the next video. Love you, Libra. Bye.